Hi, Sadie. Is it true that a snake unhinges its jaws when it eats? No! I'm so tired of hearing people say that. You know, here's what really happens, and it's not too hard to explain. And it is really cool because, as you know, some snakes can eat really big meals. Like, just imagine if I could eat a 175-pound cheeseburger without a knife and fork and without using any hands. That's what a snake can do. And this is the thing that's so crazy about snakes, is that they can eat things that are as big as they are. So imagine if I could eat a hamburger that weighed 175 pounds. Not only I could eat a hamburger that weighed 175 pounds, but I could do it without arms and legs, without knife and fork, without cutting into peaches. Just imagine I could walk my jaws over a cheeseburger. It would be a cheeseburger if I ordered it with onions and pickles and stuff. Imagine if I could take my head and just walk it around a 175 pound cheeseburger. That's what it's making. So, I thought about it. You hear on, sometimes on the animal planet on TV they say things like a snake and an unhinged jaws. You ever heard, anybody ever heard that? Okay, I really want you to get this. This is really important. That's not true. It's just not true. They don't unhinge their jaws. To me, unhinging would be like if you took this part of my arm and took it off from this part of my arm, right? I mean, this arm is hinged, right? Doesn't that look like a hinge? So if I unhinged it, doesn't that mean I would disconnect it? But that's not what snakes do. So I'm going to ask Sadie to come up with, here with me, and we're going to try to explain to you all. We're going to teach, we're going to, we're going to see if this is a good way, and then you're going to help us decide whether there might even be a better way, okay? But this is a way, so you're going to help me, Sadie? I think they'll, I think they'll do it if you show them more than I do. So there's two things about a snake's head that are really special. And the first one is, if you put your finger right here, would you mind making them do it? Yeah. You put your finger right here, you feel two bumps? You feel two bumps right there? That's where two halves of your lower jaw come together and make a joint. Right? Snakes never do that. So in snakes, that joint never happens when they're developing into a, into a snake. The other thing is that if you, you know how if you feel your head right here, you go up the mouth, you can feel your lower jaw moving against your head, right? We have a joint on each side where our lower jaw connects to our head, right? In snakes, the lower jaw doesn't connect to their head. There's an extra bone that sticks out from the side of the head that can move, and the lower jaw connects to it. So here's how that would work to make them be able to eat big food. What if we clasp our hands like this, and we hold them up like this? And now we imagine that this is the lower jaw of a lizard. So it opens its mouth like this, right? Okay, hold your mouth open for just a second, Sadie. No. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can hold your real mouth open, that's good. And so if, a, if this is a lizard, or me, or Sadie, anything we're gonna eat has to go through this hole right here, right? That's the mouth, does that make sense? Okay, let's shut our mouths. Shut, yep. Now, if it's a snake, and it doesn't have that joint at the front, right, so this is open, and it has a big, Right, sticking out on each side that its lower jaw is attached to. Then it can open its mouth this wide, and the biggest thing it can eat is this big instead of just this big. Okay? So if it's a snake, it eats like this. And if a, I'm sorry, if it's a lizard, it eats like this. And if it's a snake, it eats like this. And it basically eats that big cheeseburger bite going like that and walking its whole head around the mouse or whatever it's eating. So, does that make sense to you, Sadie? Does it make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay, now I gotta tell you, there's one part I left out because I don't know how to do the last part. Here's the last part. We have an upper jaw too, don't we? And it's like a row of teeth, a row of teeth, okay? And our, obviously our upper jaw doesn't move. Did you ever notice that? Your upper jaw doesn't actually go any place. It's stuck to your, the rest of your head, right? In snakes, that's not true. In snakes, the upper jaw is movable, okay? And there's actually two sets of teeth on each side, and they're on the inside of the mouth, sort of like ours are, but instead of being fixed, they can move up and down and out and back. And when a snake eats, not only does its lower jaw go like this, but its upper jaw goes like this. And while the upper and the lower are closing and coming back, the ones on the right are opening and going forward and coming back. 
How, should, how could we teach people about this better? What do you guys think? Anybody want to try it? Does anybody want to come up here? You got a better idea? Come on up. Can we have somebody else come up here? Mm -hmm. Yep. What's your name? I'm Carrie. Carrie. Do you know Sadie? You guys know each other. Mm -hmm. So what's your idea? Um, like, this is the upper jaw and this is the lower jaw. Mm -hmm. They both can move up and down. Mm -hmm. But there's one on each side. How can we make it so all four things are there? Left and right, I mean, sorry, upper, lower, and upper, lower. How can we do all four of them? Mm -hmm. Do we have to have two people standing next to each other being? Maybe. Uh -huh. okay. What do you think, Sadie? <laughs> <laughs> or is it better for just one person to stand up and do the, just the, this part? No. No, <laughs> see? So there is a better way. We just haven't. What do you guys think? Yes, what's your name? Come up here. Would you mind coming up here? What's your name? Stefan. Stefan. I'm here. Nice to meet you, Stefan. Okay. Um, I think we can do it with our fingers and like, we do it like this. Yeah. Okay. But then how do you make them move? Because remember, they have to move side, side. Two people thing? Yeah, do you want to, can we try the, uh, how would that be? We need a, you pick out somebody to work with you. What's your name? Cindy. Cindy. Okay. Are you going to be the lower jaws or the upper jaws? The lower. The lower? So that means you're the upper, right? All right, let's see how it works. Turn around. Like yeah, maybe you could, can I, can I move, yeah, that's it. So you got like the teeth are coming up and she's got the teeth coming down, okay. Okay, but look, it doesn't, can I just be the director here? Okay, so remember what happens is that first they move the upper and lower left forward. So I think you gotta move these forward. Nope, yep, well these are back. Pull your right arms back, pull this arm back. Stick, now, just stick your left ones forward. So I mean, here's what's happening. Okay, now I know it. I'll be the director. You get it, Sadie? So what happens is first the ones on the left go and they grab the mouse. And as they're pulling the mouse back on the left, the ones on the right are opening up and pulling the mouse back. So it's like Okay? Oh we're getting it, yes. Brilliant! Brilliant! If we had a pillow for it to be the mouse, that would be the last thing that would be so cool. I think this is it. I think this is the way to do it. What do you think, Cindy? Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. You never got to be the lower headless part of a snake before, did you? <laughs> you know what would be cool? What? That'd be working together to eat a giant cupcake. A giant cupcake. That is a great idea. We could even have a giant cake made in the shape of a mouse. <laughs> and then after it was over, the whole class could cut the cake and eat it. Jesus.